Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. y is a function of x and y is equal to the quantity dy over dx squared. Now we're going to be solving for y. I'm going to be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first method. So the first method is going to basically involve square rooting both sides. But when we square root both sides, obviously we're going to get the plus minus. So it's going to look like this. We're going to get dy over dx equals the square root of y with the plus minus sign. Because when you square this number, either way you're going to get y. Okay, so from here we can separate the variables because this is a separable, separable differential equation. We can write this as dy over square root of y, but of course we have to have the plus minus sign. Let me keep that on the right hand side, which is easier. So I'm going to write it as plus minus dx. The next step will be integrating both sides because that's going to give us uh, y, actually not the y directly, but it's going to give us x on the right hand side and we're going to get a function on the left hand side. So let's go ahead and integrate both sides with respect to x, of course. Now, if you think about 1 over square root of y, you may or may not know this, but the derivative of square root of y can be written as 1 over, uh, or I should probably use an x here because we're basically talking about x in this case. But let me just write it as a formula. So the derivative of the square root of x can be written as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. By the way, well, I said we're integrating with respect to x, but it's on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we are integrating with respect to y. So that's why I can replace y with x or x with y. Uh, it doesn't matter. Anyways, so this expression is familiar, but if you multiply the top and the bottom by 2, it's going to look better. Because now we can tell that this 2 over uh, 2 square root of y, and if you take out the 2 here and write it as 1 over 2 root y dy, we can safely say that the, ex the expression here without the 2 is the derivative of square root of y, right? So we can basically write the right hand side like this. Now let's go ahead and integrate. The integral of 1 over 2 root y is going to be square root of y, so it's going to be 2 root y equals, and the integral of dx is just x, right? So we can write it as plus minus x, and of course I have to include my constant here. Okay, from here we can solve for y. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2. That's going to give us something like this. And now I want to solve for y, so let's go ahead and square both sides. And we're going to get the y value from here. And of course, when you square, the plus minus sign is not really going to matter because even if it's negative, it's going to be a positive at the end. So we can square both sides and get the y value uh, as a solution. Great. So this is the end of the first method. Let's talk about the second method. Okay. Here's my second method, my second approach. Obviously, the second method is slightly different. Actually, maybe very different. I'm going to write my equation as y equals y prime squared. Because if y is a function of x, dy over dx it basically means y prime or the derivative of y. Okay. Now, I have this expression. I would like to differentiate both sides because I want to get y prime on the left hand side and that's going to be fun. So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides since y and y prime are both functions of x. By the way, I forgot to say that y is differentiable, but of course uh, we're solving a differential equation so it's defined over the real number, so on and so forth. All these good things are happening. Anyways, so if you differentiate the left hand side, you get y prime. The right hand side is kind of like we're going to use the chain rule, right? So we have something squared, so we have to bring the 2 down and then lower the power and then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of y prime? Of course, it is the first derivative, so the derivative of the first derivative is the second derivative. So we can just multiply it by second derivative and we'll be done with differentiation. Great. So now this is kind of interesting because we have the y prime on both sides, but we also have y double prime, which is okay. Let's Now, at this point, you have to be careful. Do not cancel out the y prime because you're going to lose roots. 
So let's go ahead and subtract this expression and we'll set it equal to zero and just solve it uh, like an equation. It is an equation actually. So let's take out y prime. That gives us one minus two y double prime is equal to zero. As you know from zero product property, if this product is zero, then each factor can equal to zero. Let's start with y prime. So if y prime is equal to zero, what, what does that mean, right? What is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that y is a constant because as you know, or you should know if you know calculus, the derivative of a constant is zero because the rate of change of a constant is zero because it doesn't change. It is a constant. So y can be written as like y equals c, where c is a constant. Now, if you go ahead and you know, take this y value and plug it into the original equation. What, let's see what happens. We have y equals y prime squared, and we just got that y is equal to c, and y prime is equal to zero. So from here we get c equals zero, which means that y equals zero is a solution of this equation. And that kind of makes sense because if you think about it, if y is equal to zero at any point, it's kind of like a constant, then the derivative of zero is zero. When you square, it's gonna be zero, so zero equals zero, everything is good. But what about another solution? Do we have another solution? Absolutely. And the other solution basically comes from here. If you set this equal to zero, you get one minus two y double prime is equal to zero, which means y double prime is equal to one half. So it's kind of interesting, you know, uh, we have the second derivative being a constant, so we can kind of integrate both sides. Uh, so thinking like we're thinking basically like the derivative of what equals one half and the answer is one half multiplied by x or of course you can always add a constant to it so let's just add k let's use a different constant from the first method or the first possible solution here so this gives us actually for, uh, forgive me it's y prime because the derivative of y prime is y double prime so we're integrating basically, right? If you integrate one half, you get one half x plus a constant. Great, but I wanna get y, so I'm going to integrating one more time. So if you are trying to get y from here, you should integrate one half of x plus k with respect to x. And of course, at the end, you're gonna add a constant one more time. Let's go ahead and do it. If you integrate x, it's x squared over two but we already have a one half, so it's gonna be one fourth x squared. If you integrate a constant like k, it's gonna be kx. And of course I have to add another one, let's just call that constant m. Now when you differentiate this twice, you should be getting one half, and you do. Great, so this works, but we don't really know what's going on with the k and the m values. Is there any other thing that we can do about it? Let's plug it in. So what is our original problem? Our original problem says y equals y prime squared. So let's go ahead and use that equation to find out something about k and m. Now, y is equal to y prime squared. What is y prime? y prime is, so I can write it like this, y equals y prime squared, but y prime is this. So I can basically just square that. That's kind of interesting, right? And when you square it, you're going to be getting 1 fourth x squared. When you multiply and double, you're gonna get um, kx. And then finally, you're gonna get k squared. Now this is supposed to be the y value, but remember, we just claim that y is equal to this by way of integration. This means that m is equal to k squared. In other words, we can write our solution to this differential equation as y equals 1 fourth x squared plus kx plus k squared. So whatever k is, you're gonna square it, that's gonna be your constant. So that's one of the solutions. And obviously, y equals zero also satisfies this equation this equation, it's also a solution. And this brings us to the end of the second method and to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let, please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. From now on, the schedule will be normal, a video every day at the same time. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.